Hey guys, welcome back to Holistic Homesteading with the Hearst. I am Megan, and today we are going to be showing you how to make a whole chicken in two chicken cuts and what to do with those cuts when you are finished. So if you're new here and you like holistic health tips, homesteading, and the occasional cabin DIY, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more content coming your way. Also, if you get to the end of this video and you like it, be sure to give it a thumbs up because it really does help support my channel. It helps YouTube to know that you guys like these videos and that they should show them to more people. And in the comment section below, I would really like to know, do you typically buy your chicken from the store whole or in cuts? Um, I typically have purchased them in cuts already, but now that I know how to do this, I don't think that I will ever do that again. And hopefully we'll never have to buy chicken from the store because we are butchering our own. Anyways, let's get into it. So this past weekend, we spent a whole Saturday with our friends at Forest Fed Farm butchering our chickens. We had raised meat chickens. We ended up with 49 of them, and I was not 100% sure that they were going to be quite big enough. But now that I am in the midst of cutting them up and putting them into freezer bags, it's been quite a bit of meat. I think that using a whole chicken is absolutely amazing and knowing that none of the animal was getting wasted is great. So we have kept heads and necks, we have kept livers, hearts, and lungs. And we will not be eating the hearts and lungs, actually those will be going to our dog and our cat. The livers we will be trying to make into a liver pate. I honestly have never tried liver before. Um, my husband has put them in a smoothie before and I've tried that. I did not taste it and I don't know that he had like a whole lot in there. So I am excited to try liver pate and a little bit nervous. So you can let me know below if you ever tried liver pate before. I'm still on the newbie list on that one. So moving along to the head and neck, we will be using those for broth. Oh yes, and we kept the feet as well, which we will be using for broth as well. So the broths can be made into soups or can be put into rice, and I actually have a video on how to make broth, and I will link that in the description box below so you guys can check that out if you haven't seen that already. We are also keeping the chicken spine, and I will show you exactly what that looks like and the rest of the carcass once we get into the rest of the cuts. We'll be using that for chicken stock as well. So we have a lot of stuff ready for chicken stock, and hopefully by the winter time, we will be ready to make chicken soup and have some really yummy, healing soup. Yeah, I'm, I'm kinda ready for fall and winter, but I never say that. All right, let's get into the cuts. So this is one of our chickens and it's actually a pretty good size. We actually, I'm gonna grab a bigger one, which was pretty cool. Now, we brought these home in a cooler and my husband decided to try and carry the cooler in by himself because I came in and crashed instead of helping him get everything out. And he dropped the cooler and chickens went rolling everywhere so there is still some dirt on there I've had my three and a half year old over here rinsing them out and she has missed a few spots so I'm going to rinse this one off a little bit and keep going okay so I've rinsed the chicken off and we're just gonna kind of go through the anatomy of the chicken once its head's cut off <laughs> all right so here you have the chicken breast here you have the chicken wings here is the chicken thigh, and here would be your drumstick, which most people use for fried chicken. The very first thing that I like to do is go ahead and take off the legs. So you'll see, um, once you lay the chicken on the back side, you will see these little lines that kind of connect the thing. And so I will go ahead and slice into there. So once I get that part sliced, I will flip the chicken over and I'm sorry, this is probably gonna have some sounds that are not very flattering. Um, and then I have some kids in the background as well. So this is real life, this is how we do it here. Um, I put my thumb right at the joint and just kind of bend backwards until I hear that joint kind of snap out of place. And I'm sorry, that sounds gross. And then I'm just going to card around 
that joint and you may end up having to kind of pull it out sometimes I can cut right into it sometimes I have to pull it out so what you're left with is a nice chicken leg and the thigh now you could go ahead and find the joint between those and you can have a chicken thigh and a chicken leg I'm just keeping all of ours together because we are going to cook them the exact same way so there's no reason for me to put more work into this for myself so we are putting those together all right so once the legs are removed the next thing that I like to work on are the wings these are pretty easy if you'll just hold it by the wing and just kind of hit the armpit of it <laughs> and then around that joint socket it pretty much just kind of falls apart just keep kind of sawing back and forth now I will suggest um, having a knife sharpener on hand because it seems like your knife will get dull pretty quickly. And I need to go ahead and sharpen my knife again. But anyways, then you have the wing here. And I am storing those with my chicken legs as well. We like to go ahead and fry them up in our skillet with some avocado oil or some butter, put some spices on them, and then layer them with some nice yummy buffalo wing sauce that I make homemade. And one day I will have that up on the blog, trying to perfect it so that it's easy to replicate. Um, but until then, you guys can salivate over that. Next thing I'm gonna go and move on to the breast. Now, if you will lay the chicken on the side, you can find the fat line, and if you will start just sawing right there, will find it pretty easy to go along the rib cage and just get all of that meat off of there. The rib cage, that's where, that's what holds in all their organs. And I just go along the one side and then go along the other side. So once I get the sides filleted, I will just hold the meat up top and just slice right there as close to the bone as I can. Sometimes I get a little bit um, underneath the bone, but it will just fall right off of there if your knife is nice and sharp, then I'm saving that. But once I get these down to the carcass, I will just use these for chicken stock. So I will throw three carcasses in a bag and then we'll use those and put them in the crock pot, fill them up with water, spices, um, celery, carrots, onions, you know, all that yummy stuff. And what little meat is left on there will be in, in the crock pot. It'll be so tender and juicy and we'll just use that as part of the soup. All right, so now for storage. I did buy a vacuum sealer and I think it works absolutely amazing, but I did not prepare enough rolls of bags for all of the chicken that I have. So, um, I've had to convert over to just Ziploc bags. It's working. I don't think the seal is as good. The plastic is not as thick. And honestly, I don't really want to use plastic anyways, but you know, whenever you're doing bulk and you're trying to freezer safe things, you have to use plastic. So I do recommend, and I will put um, a link in the description box for the vacuum sealer that I use. I really like it. Um, and I will in the future buy more bags and be more prepared for that. But for now, I am using hefty zipper lock, zip lock bags. I am just taking um, my meats and just squeezing out all of the air as I can and then just using that zipper to seal it. So it's like that. Now, I will be taking my breast meat and canning it with a friend in a few days. So I have a friend from church that will be showing me how to pressure can chicken so we can use it for tacos or for soups or whatever we want to use it for in the future. It will already be cooked, so we'll just be able to pop the can, heat it up, and it'll be ready. Put some spices in there. So I'm excited about that, especially for the coming winter, so we won't have to prep as much, and I'm really excited about that. The wings and the legs we'll be just put in the freezer, we'll thaw it out before our meal and we'll fry them. And then of course the stock and the bone broth will just be made um, 
when we can do it. I may buy some containers to freeze it as well. We'll see how much freezer space we have left once we get through all of this. I am going to finish up the rest of these birds. I hope that this was informative for you. I hope that you learned something from it. Be sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the thumbs up button. And I will see you guys in the next video. See ya.